The whole world watched what happened in New Orleans during Katrina. We all were devastated for our fellow citizens. When we sent Nate Burkus, along with some other members of our Oprah Show team, down to New Orleans to see what we could do, Nate, in a moment, in a flash of a moment, understood what really mattered. In September of 2005, just four days after Hurricane Katrina ravaged the Gulf Coast, Nate Burkus went to Metairie, Louisiana, to see how people were coping in the aftermath of the deadly storm. It reminds me of the tsunami in that um, he, these people, their expressions, their body language, you can tell that they just don't know what tomorrow is going to be all about. And one of the saddest things about what's going on here are that people have saved their animals by putting them on rafts and keeping them out of the water. And now they're here and they're not allowed to take their dogs with them on the buses. And he's told us at the last minute, we can't take the dog with this guy and his dog rescued me off my roof. He's had the dog for 14 years. He's only 24, so he's had the dog for 14 years. You know what, I'm not doing this for the camera. We don't give a about that. We have a solution for you, okay? I want to take the dog on, on um, what's his name? Rafiki. Sorry? Rafiki. Rafiki. Um, we're going to take him and two other dogs that we met here, and we're going to send him to a house in Baton Rouge. It's a private house where we're sleeping. And when you get back... <laughs> we can get to Baton Rouge. We, get... we got to keep in Baton Rouge. <laughs> I told you P was gonna be okay. <laughs> I told you P. <laughs> I told you, dog. <laughs> God, that still makes me cry. <laughs> that still makes me cry because that was such raw, powerful emotion for him, wasn't that? Yeah. 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 He didn't yeah. need the end of the explanation. Yeah. What he heard was that the somebody dog was, was there and, be safe. and yeah, and that somebody cared. Yeah. And that. I saw him. Yeah. What happened to that, that story? What happened? He, they were reunited. Yeah. Um, Rafiki went in the back of a limousine with a few other dogs. Yeah. To, I know it sounds crazy, but that's what happened. And he went in the back to this house where we were staying, Lisa Ling's friend. Yeah. Um, agreed to take in as many dogs as we could send up there. And they went to the pet store and they bought food and water and they kept all the dogs until everybody was relocated and I gave them all the phone number. So they all reunited. It was a really beautiful thing. Wow, that was yeah, beautiful. it still makes me cry. You know why? Because I was thinking, just as I know you will be too, those of you who have pets, I was thinking about myself and my own dog. I'm thinking about all the people who are in that situation and you've grown up with your pet, you love your pet. Those of us who have pets know that it's not just pets. It's a member of your family. It's a family member. So the reason why that still makes me cry is when I see how grateful he is that somebody has come to think of his dog as he thinks of his dog, that it's somebody that you love and you cherish. And oh my God, that is a, that is a really powerful moment, I think, because it's not just about the dog. It's about Nate stopping in that moment and seeing that that dog really mattered to him, that this was a member of his family. It would be like leaving a member of your family on the side of the road. And people who have their, their, their pets who are family members are not gonna leave their pets behind. I wouldn't be able to choose which dog I would have to leave behind. I wouldn't be able to say, you know, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna leave my dogs here. So, oh, that's why that's so heart-wrenching. Mm -hmm.